Another big match programme today, bringing you the best in football and bringing you to a studio guest described this way in today's papers. He's an original to be savoured and enjoyed, say the Sunday Express, a torment, according to the news of the world. He scarcely has an equal in football for impudence, say the Sunday Mirror. That man, Rodney Marsh of Queen's Park Rangers, we talk to him later in the programme. This is after you've seen his contribution to our main match today, Queen's Park Rangers against Middlesbrough. And Rangers have recovered brilliantly from that depressing and distressing season in First Division football and have now proudly played themselves to the top of the Second Division. Their team, and particularly their defence, has been strengthened for this match by an expensive signing from Sheffield Wednesday, Vic Mobley. They say they wanted extra height and power in their own penalty area. So he's an added problem for a Middlesbrough team that came so close to promotion last season but has made no impression so far this season. But with a young player like Eric McMordy, the Irish international, they must always have chances. Dave Clements. Marsh coming away from that defence. Beautiful skills. Oh, beautiful stuff by Marsh to Morgan. Bridges going in, and it's now Bridges made for him by Marsh. Eight minutes gone. And sheer magic from Rodney Marsh. And a throw to Middlesbrough. Smith, who had several very good seasons with Portsmouth. Clement away to Marsh. Good control there by Marsh. Not that he was under great pressure. Hazel. And there's Leach going in. Beautiful running by Leach. And it's Alex Smith. Laid law. Dave Clement. Bill Gates, I think, probably will be equal to this one. No, he's not. Clark has put... Got a great chance here. There it is, number two. Mistake by Gates. Number two, Frank Clark. And really, that was a bad mistake by Gates, who should have had that covered and cleared. Leaving his poor goalkeeper. Here's Alex Smith. Leaving his poor goalkeeper absolutely stranded. And Laidlaw followed everywhere by Tony Hazel. Clark, well onto his body. Clement, Leach. Coming towards Bridges, flicking it on for Marsh. The linesman's flag is up. The linesman's flag is up and he's offside. Well, what a tremendous goal that would have been, but the linesman's flag was up as Marsh went belting through. Leach. Morgan running through, but Morris Short's ball. Smith, a poor one, straight to Clements. Now Clark, Clements continuing his run. Dave Clement right through. And number three by Clement. <laughs> 37 minutes, and Dave Clement scores his fourth goal of the season. And Queen's Park Rangers now three into the lead. 
So Queen's Park Rangers then kick off the second half in a very healthy position. Three up, Bridges now trying to take on Jones and doing it well. Good work there by Bridges. And it's still not away by any means. Marsh steaming up and the ball taken off his foot by Leach, his own teammate. What a devastating opening few seconds there by Queen's Park Rangers, now Bridges. They almost caught uh, Middlesbrough cold, and I must say, for the last quarter of an hour of that first half, Middlesbrough beginning to look a demoralised side. Clement versus Smith, and George Smith winning it. He's got Downing outside him. Laidlaw in the middle, and Hickton as well! And a throw. Well, a very happy Queen's Park Rangers uh, management there with Frank Sibley, the substitute on the left. Smith now looking for Allen on the far side, but now it's Marsh for Queen's Park Rangers, flicking it on for Leach, and now to Marsh. Bridges free on the right. Trying to cut inside, and a good shot there by Bridges. Tremendous counter-attack by Queen's Park Rangers from deep in their own half. Well, Clark is all right again. It's a corner then for Queen's Park Rangers. Venables again with it. Clark getting up for it. And Bridges, can he turn on it? He does! Barry Bridges! A goal out of nothing! And the fourth now for Queen's Park Rangers. 4-0 with just under 20 minutes to go. Alex Smith on the goal line, desperately trying to keep it out, but all he could do was boot it into the roof of the net. Clement. Marsh, oh, an imperious flick on there. Marsh again. Will he take on too much this time? Down he goes. And the referee saying that he fell. And Jones hooking it away. Crowd, I think, probably expecting a penalty, but Mr. Tinkler saying that Marsh had fallen. But Mordy to Hickton. Hickton again. Back to Downing. Putting it through now for McMordy. Headed away by Watson. And that really was the closest that medals were have been. A very good win there by Queen's Park Rangers. What a wonderfully entertaining side they are, particularly, I thought, <coughs> yesterday in the first half when we had some real moments of magic from Rodney Marsh. We should be reading, meeting Rodney in just a moment. But first of all, let's take a closer look at his contribution to yesterday's game. Jimmy Hill. One of the great advantages of having Rodney Marsh on your well, side is that he casts a spell on the other Do team and that they tend to look for him and ignore other players. Here he picks up the ball in the middle of the field, flicks it off, and goes on a very strong through run. But look at the number of Middlesbrough players he's pulling round him and makes that space to, for Leach to go in and nearly score a goal. He's got tremendous physique and can resist challenges. Look here how number five bounces off him before he cheekily puts it through his legs and finally beaten by the end of a toe cap. When high balls are about, he can be relied upon to win them as he does there. But mostly, it's his tremendous control and shooting power that makes him such a dangerous forward. Just watch as this movement builds up. It was one of Rangers' best pieces of football. Here he is, picking up the ball there. One bit of control and then a flashing shot into the net. Unfortunately, it was offside, but what a wonderful piece of football skill. He's tremendous dribbling ability and confidence to hold on to it. You feel that, if necessary, he could take on everybody on the field. Just watch this. Through his legs, players all around him, doesn't make any difference and nonchalantly flicks it off. He has the ability to slot through balls at a moment's notice. Just watch the way he paces that one through, just out of a forward's reach. But a splendid passing ability and one to play with other players. He's not just a loner. Watch him here as he links in this passing movement and finally places a perfect through ball to Barry Bridges. There it is, which ends with a fierce left foot shot just over the top. And finally, 
the cheekiest through ball of the lot, but still perfectly placed for a player to run onto. Here's Terry Venables. He links in a movement with him. Now watch this lovely back heel, perfectly in his stride, that put Middlesbrough under that kind of pressure. Well, that's a useful contribution to yesterday's game, Rodney. How much better do you think you're playing this season than last season? Well, I think I am playing better, Jim, because uh, last season I had inj an injury, as you know, and uh, I missed the first 20 games and never really got back into my stride. What about the Rangers this season? I mean, are they the whole team has picked up confidence. What's that due to? Oh, I think they have, yeah, but it, it can only be down to winning, you know. You win matches. You, you seem to take a grip of games very early on and do your stuff in the first half. In fact, you didn't, yesterday, you didn't wait long to provide a goal for Rangers to give them that confident ring. Yeah. How did that come about? Well, a throwing came from, from the left and uh, I chested it down and uh, controlled it. And, uh, we, can it see, we can see that now in slow motion. It really was a brilliant bit of control. Why didn't you hit it over straight away? Well, it wasn't the right height, so I couldn't get, you know, couldn't get it up. Yeah. And uh, you just eventually it, it got the right height and I crushed it. You're putting the lace the right way before you actually <laughs> hit it over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there it goes, and in goes Ian Morgan with the flick. I notice how many Rangers players are in there. There's two yeah. challenging... Look, look at the head of that. It's good. Bridges. Beautiful. There you are on the left of the picture there. Do you yeah. reckon you might be in an offside position? Possibly, yeah, but, but I wasn't really in the film of play. You know. I think you've got to go in for these in case they, you, know, you get a rebound. The manager's been onto you a little bit, as near about getting offside. That's quite true, yeah, but I don't think you can complain where the goals are scored. Well, just for the manager, just let's have a look at that from another angle, our camera behind the goal, to see if, in fact, you were offside at the moment the ball went in the back of the net. Here it is now. We pick up the throw-in. Yeah. I know you'll enjoy seeing it again. There is exactly the same thing. And beautiful overhead kick. Now, just watch as it comes across the goal. Look, there you are. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't really in the film of play, though. W wasn't in <laughs> 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 the referee's never wrong when he agrees with you. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. What about your uh, defence? Do you think you're strong enough in defence? You gave away four goals at Cardiff last week. I think that's the, that's the only game we've had a goal scored against us in the last five games. That was a, that was that game at Cardiff and last week. And that was four. So <laughs> and that was four, yeah. <laughs> but generally, you think well, Mobley? What do you think about him yesterday? Well, he, actually, he's a very good player. I think he's an asset to any side. Mm. Barry Bridges sort of taking chances now that last season he might have missed. You're over your injury. Is this the difference in Queens Park Rangers this season? I wouldn't say so, Jim. I think uh, the main difference is we, we signed to a Venables, who's a tremendous asset. And he's, he breaks up attacks and uh, he starts on, you know, he's a tremendous target in midfield. I'm interested in this because I watched two or three times the Tottenham crowd giving him the bird and they couldn't stand him at any price. Why is it that a player just changes like that? I think it's, it's, it's obviously when a fellow changes a club, he, he, he gets completely out of one character into another character, you know. You think he's, he's a great player? I do, yeah. What about yourself? Um, I read three Sunday papers last week, one of them, Danny Blanchard, I think, among them, who said that you should be in the Mexico squad without a doubt. Do you d worry about this or feel that you're playing with a chance of that in mind? I don't really think so, Jim. I think that every English player wants to play for England and that uh, all he has to do is play his best every week consistently. Yeah. What do you think Sir Alf is looking for? I don't really know. I just go out every week to play as well as I can and that's, that's all I do. Do you think he's liable to choose the Rodney Mars the entertainer or does he want some Rodney Mars the work rate uh, artist or what? Well, I think if any player gets in the England team, he deserves to be in it. <laughs> Rodney, <laughs> whether you're consistent on the field to satisfy Sir Alf's standards or not, I'm sure you're the most consistent entertainer in the business. Thank you very much for coming on the big match. Thank you, Jim. Rodney Marsh and Queen's Park Rangers then happily top of the second division. <laughs>
For our main match, we go into the second division, but what an amazing match it turns out to be. Queen's Park Rangers against Birmingham. Right up there amongst the attackers now, and Vowden too. A nice little ball played for Vowden. Turned back again. <laughs> Vincent missed kicking it. And finally, it's still not away. And it's still not away. And our studio guest, the man you saw at the top of the programme, Rodney Marsh of Queen's Park Rangers. Beard coming along nicely as well. Let's make our start at Loftus Road yesterday. Queen's Park Rangers against Birmingham. Both in a season of disappointment. For Rangers, so much a question of injuries. And into their team today for his first game is 20-year-old Andy McCulloch from Walton and Hersham, who only signed professional forms on Friday. And Birmingham, well, they made a fine start of the season, but they've slipped badly now. They look to Alan Campbell here to bring more drive in midfield, £80,000 from Charlton. Two other familiar faces, goalkeeper Mike Kelly, so recently with Queen's Park Rangers, and Roger Hind, recently with Crystal Palace. Hockey very aggressive, but Hazel coming away with it, finding uh, Venables in turn to Marsh, faced by Robinson. Marsh with a shot across the goal, and Kelly really had to get down to that one from Marsh. Taken almost from nothing, Rodney Marsh there. Ball still in play. Ron Hunt. And now Gillard. Marsh was calling for it, and a slip there allows Marsh to go in. A goal by Marsh. What a goal. Mike Kelly absolutely beaten. And Rodney Marsh puts Rangers ahead with five minutes gone. Well, there was a slip by Robinson, and Marsh really pounced on that one. <laughs> one for McCullough to try and get under. Marsh now for Rangers. Played wide for Clement, what a good ball. Ricochet there, Marsh going in, oh, against the ball, the header, and a save by Kelly. That was very nearly a goal there, no, in fact, the whistle had gone. Good play by Marsh, and although the point was disallowed there, because it's a free kick, a very good reflex header by young McCulloch. McCulloch straining to get underneath that one. A missed kick by Beard, but he couldn't quite to get to it in time, and hooky corner. Hockey's rather firm back pass there, wide of Kelly. Well, certainly Mike Kelly's been pretty busy in this opening uh, quarter of an hour or so. Rangers leading by a golden hill, scored by Rodney Mars. And now Mike Ferguson with the corner, Clement right up there, as you'll see. Marsh getting ahead to it! Oh, Rodney Marsh! A second goal to Marsh! 14 minutes gone. And from the corner, Rodney Marsh getting above everybody else to flick that ball so beautifully wide of Kelly for his second goal and Rangers as well. Gillard. Pumped in there for, by Thompson for Latchford. Surprising how much time Latchford was given. Summerhill! Oh, magnificent save! And a goal by Latchford. After one superb save by Fox, who must be very, very annoyed. Slack work certainly in the defence there by Rangers, allowing uh, Latchford in the first place so much time. Summerhill shot touchdown and Latchford making it 2-1. Campbell. Oh, good play there by Ferguson. Flick forward now for Morgan. He's got Marsh over on the right. Here's Marsh. And a tremendous break by Venables now. Oh, what a good... Is it a goal? It is a goal by Venables, who ran like a hare. What a tremendous piece of football by Venables, running onto that pass by Marsh. And the power of his shot completely deceiving Kelly, who got a hand to it and couldn't save it. Mike Kelly, no wonder he shakes his head. Hockey, looking for somebody free and finds Vincent. Beard's gone outside him. Hockey. Still hockey. 
Beard right out there still, Malcolm Beard. A little chip through there for Summerhill, taken well on the body, twice, across the goal, Latchford! Oh, a goal and a good one! Beautifully made, though, by Summerhill for Latchford, his second of the game. What magnificent skills there on the touchline, on his body by Summerhill. Laid across there, and a simple enough task then for Latchford. Well, at this rate, with five goals in 20 minutes, we're going to need a cricket scoreboard to keep this match going, to keep... Uh, Abreast of it, here's Vincent. Good work by Vincent. Oh, and nearly there, creeping inside the post with Parks plunging across his goal from Vincent to push it aside. <laughs> Summerhill, across well, and Latchford, oh, within an ace of getting his hat trick and the equaliser for Birmingham City. He really is an opportunist, this fellow in the six yard area. Venable shielding the ball well. Ferguson to pump it across again. And McCulloch goes in! So the new boy gets a goal, Andy McCulloch. And a very good header indeed. Well, there's no happier boy in football today than Andy McCulloch. Signed as a professional yesterday, and he still hasn't had his forms accepted by the league because they have to have 48 hours, so he's in this strange no-man's land of being half amateur and half professional, but my goodness, he's amongst the goal scorers. <laughs> Summerhill harried and hustled all the way by Clement and hustled into an error, and Ferguson is right there in the middle of it. Will it come through to Marsh? Oh, look at that for skill by Marsh! Oh, and what a goal! Rodney Marsh's hat-trick! Oh, what incredible skill by Marsh! There really was no way through, and yet Rodney Marsh found a way through. And certainly Eusebio, in that number 10 shirt, couldn't have done better than Marsh. Well, some really exhilarating forward play there by the Rangers, but I noticed in the news of the world this morning that Rangers manager Les Allen, as realistic as ever, uh, is very worried about his defence, and he told reporter Dennis Signey that he hoped his defenders would learn something from television. Well, even so, the happier side must be the Rangers' attack, particularly the former's essay of Rodney Marsh. And before we meet Rodney, our studio guest today, here's Jimmy Hill. Well, last week we saw a superb hat-trick from Malcolm McDonald at Luton, and this week we've got one that a lot of people argue is that much better. McDonald's hat-trick was all shooting power. This one was a volley, it was a header, and it was a little bit of football magic that you'd go all over the world, I think, to see. The first one, the volley, the dipping volley, came from a good bit of Rangers football. There's a little slip which helped them out, but Rodney takes it down, the ball's in the air, and look at that volley, look at the power over the goalkeeper's head, dead centre, just under the crossbar. That's the power of shooting, and you, uh, you will have noticed there that that was probably seven yards outside the penalty area. Now we look at this one from a corner. This was a perfectly placed header. Look as he times his run in, there he goes, and how he guides that perfectly. Now I want you to look where it hits in the goal. You couldn't be more accurate than that. On the run, in the air, with a power header from a corner. And finally, the goal, which again was uh, something that perhaps could be said to be indescribable. There's all the mix-up on the floor. And I want you to count how many defenders are there. Rodney Mars is pushed away, and then he does his little bit of magic. There's the little drag back. There are four around him there. He throws two of them to the left. In fact, they collide. And then when it looks as if he can't get the power on the turn into that shot, he does, gets it through the defender's legs. And there is that third magnificent goal, Rodney Marsh at his superb best. Well, that was a hat-trick that wouldn't have disgraced uh, Pele, Rodney. Is it the best hat-trick you've ever scored? I don't think so, Jim. I scored a hat-trick last year against Blackpool, which I, I felt was the best. What, it gave you more satisfaction? Well, it came at a time last year when I was struggling for goals, and it was, uh, it was more than welcome when it came. Was there a better goal in it than the third goal yesterday? 
Well, yeah, I thought so. It was a, a banana shot from the edge of the area, which I felt was better, yeah. A banana shot? Yeah. Does it give you more satisfaction to score that kind of extraordinary goal than perhaps a straightforward one, a good passing movement and a you know, really explosive straight shot? Well, it does, really, because they come so few and far between. Yeah. You know. The goal yesterday, the third goal, that other extraordinary goal, was that your second best goal of your career, would you say? I would say so, yeah. It was struck better than what I thought it was on the day. You know, <laughs> looking at it again, it yeah. <laughs> always looks better the day after. Yeah. Uh, how many hat-tricks have you scored? About seven. Seven? Yeah. How many do you think you're going to score before you're finished? <laughs> I think that's probably the last one. <laughs> Until next. Rodney, Rangers, away from you. Uh, last year, I did say in an interview with Terry Venables on this programme that you were too easily beaten away from home and I didn't think you'd get promotion last year. That seems to apply even more this season. Yeah. The, the thing is there, Jim, you see, when we're at home, we, we really go outside, you know, we, we play with two wingers wide and we really go, we go at the people. But so when we go away from home, we tend to be more defensive-minded, you know, which I don't think is a good thing for us. Mm. And we suffer for, because of this, you know. Rodney, as a player, I, I think you have it in you to be perhaps uh, you're as good a player as any of the top six in the world as a forward. And yet somehow you don't quite seem to be a achieving that. You seem to be the greatest entertainer maybe we have in the country, but you don't seem to be achieving that. Do you, do you have that ambition? Well, certainly, Jim. Yeah, but I think the thing is, I, I think it's a question of exposure. In the second division, you don't seem to get the same exposure. You know, and, it's, and when I played in the first division, it's been with two struggling sides fighting for relegation. You see, mm. you got some exposure yesterday in the second division. Was that why a hat trick in in front of four million instead of thirteen thousand? Did no, that make a difference to your play? Not really. No, I don't think you really realise that people are watching. You know, you just go and play the game the way you, the only way you know how to play it. What about your all round game? I mean, uh, to be very critical of you, I would say that once in a while, particularly away, you know, you don't maybe run as much as you should, you don't chase as much as you should, and you don't tackle as much as you should. You, if I was being very critical, yeah. would you accept those criticisms? Not, not as such, no. I think, uh, as I said earlier, we tend to play defensively away from home. You see, we leave perhaps one, or even, you know, at the most two footballs up. You know, I think that, well, that gives you more room to, room to manoeuvre. I think we, we struggle when we play defensively. Is there any hope for you to get with a, a good side in the first division, be it Queen's Park Rangers? Do you think there is a possibility that you I think there's a chance there? of Rangers getting the first division quite soon, yeah. You think the spirit's there within the club to do that? Most well, certainly the spirit is, yeah. Led by Rodney Marsh and many more hat tricks. Thanks, sir. Well, Rodney, thank you very much for that hat trick yesterday. Thank you for all the entertainment at Shepherd's Bush and uh, for the interview today. Pleasure. Yes. So, the amazing skills of Rodney Marsh, two beards on one programme. We really have got a bonus on the big match today. So let's get straight on with it as we go to Loftus Road, where Queen's Park Rangers are now busily building a new stand to go with this one that went up indeed only four years ago. Uh, the other one is on the other side of the field, which in fact should be ready by the end of the year. That is progress for you, and Rangers now say that they have the team to go with that progress. A team that comes to this match having lost only one league game, and now with Ian Gillard at number three, having his first game of the season, and Mick Leach coming in at number nine. As for their visitors, Cardiff City, a most disappointing start to the season for them. At their bottom of the second division with only two wins all season. But they keep the side now that drew at home in the week with Brighton and Hove Albion. Rangers, meanwhile, have the man who's replaced Rodney Marsh, Stan Bowles here, £110,000 from Carlisle. Gibson giving Bell a bit of stick, wanting him to go faster down that left wing, and it was Bell who crossed the ball again there. Reese is right in there, falling over, and Clark very nearly putting it in there for Cardiff. In fact, Clark shot cannoning off a fallen player, and from that sort of range, with his power of shooting, it quite likely would have given Clark's no chance. 
to Cardiff, who looked the more determined side again, uh, convinced everybody that they are having the better of it at the moment, with just over 20 minutes gone. Gibson again. This time he's got Gil Reese on the left, number 10. Cross again towards Brian Clark, got up well. Woodruff fighting for it too. G um, Foggard. Rangers really a little muddled there, finally getting themselves out of trouble with Venables. And then they're being put in with a chance now as Bowles takes it up. Phillips stopped for a moment. And Irwin, a fine save from Stan Bowles. And Woodruff could only half get to that, couldn't play it where he wanted to, and it's Venables again to take it up for Queen's Park Rangers. The ball for Francis. Still Francis, letting one go, and another fine save by Irwin. Two very fine saves, both of them on the ground, from Billy Irwin in the space of a minute. Venables to Bowles. Rangers now beginning to catch the breeze. Francis. Mark Busby to Gillard. Cross low this time, right across the goal. Oh, and Phillips very nearly put it into his own goal. He panicked at the last moment and very nearly succeeded in putting that into his own goal. Quite a good long one there, and Gibbons trying to flick it on. Stan Bowles flicking that just over the crossbar. When I would have thought a fair proportion of people inside the ground must have thought that there was a chance that, that might have crept just in under the bar. Busby getting it away to Bowles. In turn, trying to get away from Phillips. Clements, who coming up very quickly, and the ball into the path of Jerry Francis. And was he pulled down? He's given a free kick. I thought for a moment it was a penalty, he pointed towards the spot and ran that way. But it was the wrong interpretation on my part. In fact, he then swerved off to the edge of the penalty area, a yard further on, and that would have been a penalty, as it is a free kick. Bennett was playing it there. And another beautiful save from Clement. And that time into the side netting from Bowles. Tremendous shot, though, from Dave Clement, and really superbly saved once more by Billy Irwin. Gibson. Givens. Bowles. Oh, a nice bit of shimmying there by Stan Bowles, and a little pass through, and a flick on, and Francis couldn't quite reach it. Leach trying to turn it again, and it's not away yet. Francis going in, everybody's going in, and finally Bell gets it away. But some really nifty building up again by Queen's Park Rangers, and Francis just unable to get to the shot that really would have counted. Gibson. Givens. Gillard. Leaving it for Venables. Busby. Still Busby, getting in a shot, but it's too high. Well, it's certainly a beautiful day to be coming to uh, football anywhere. Gillard again. The long one forward this time for Leach. Got Givens in the middle, and Givens now will hit this one! Cross came over from Leach, which was missed by the Cardiff defence. Gibbons was on it like a flash. Good flick on there by Busby. Carver now for Cardiff. Oh, turn that into the path of Busby, and Busby going on. And he shot wide, but uh, in fact, 
Bowles was offside, and technically there's no doubt about it. And that was quickly closed by the Rangers' uh, defence, and Busby turning it on for Francis. In turn now for Givens, and Givens is away again. Down he goes, and that is a penalty. Givens brought down, and I don't honestly think Cardiff can have too many complaints. Givens was completely through. That beautiful through pass, and down he went. And so Queen's Park Rangers get a penalty, and it's Givens who's going to take it. He scored one. Can he now beat Billy Irwin in that Cardiff goal? Givens against Irwin, and that's 2 nothing. Next goal number six now in the season for Don Givens. Givens, Hazel, and Busby a long one forward. Venables beautifully on now for Bowles. Oh, a tremendous goal! A fantastic goal by Chris Park Rangers. The whole length of the field that had the hallmark of teamwork about it from deep in their own half until Bowles finally got hold of it and hammered it left when it passed Billy Irwin. What a tremendous goal to put Queen Park Rangers 3-0 ahead. Well, it's Bowles who finally banged it in, his third goal since he came down for Carlisle. Evans letting it run. Bell to cover him. Turning in one way, turning in the other. Givens with a chance to get a shot in there, cannoning off Murray. Ferguson. Everybody waited, and Venables got possession of it. Givens turning it on. And no, 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 there was a push. There was a push by Leach. Well, some exciting stuff there, and Queen's Park Rangers, with a game in hand on some of them, now move up to sixth in the table, with uh, another home game to come next Saturday. And Cardiff now, they are two points adrift of everybody else, alas, at the very bottom. And now to discuss the merits, or indeed otherwise, of both sides, Jimmy Hill. It was an afternoon of contrasting teams. Queen's Park Rangers full of bright hope and ambition, and Cardiff beginning to despair, both on and off the field. But nevertheless, it all added up to quite an enjoyable afternoon. I think Rangers were a bit shaken by their first defeat at Hull, so severe was it, and they lacked confidence to start with. But once they got going, it was one-way traffic. What I really enjoyed was the chance to have a look at their two new players. First of all, Stan Bowles, £110,000. He's a naturally left-footed player, but what a sweet left foot it is. He moves people out of the way well, just shimmies them away, and you can see him doing it here, making the space, very well for that left-footed shot. Good save there, low down from Irwin. But in the second half, he had the opportunity he'd been looking for to score his third goal. Shows his style there. Once again, a very good move. Building up from defence, a first-time ball there. And believe it or not, that's Terry Venables jumping and nodding the ball onto him. And watch again how he cuts to his favourite foot. Easing the way there towards his left and then tucking it in the corner of the goal. So much, £110,000 stand bowls. What about Don Gibbons? only £38,000 and cheap by comparison. He's got two very good feet and he finishes so well. This is a slightly missed hit cross there, but look how he holds out. Really hard and firm off the meat of the boot with his left foot. And when it came his turn to take the penalty, see which is his natural foot, because he's bound to use that one, and it's his right foot. Not a bad goal scorer, seven goals already, and Queen's Park Rangers are wondering whether they've got the buy of the season. So much for buying, but I really feel the Rangers' future will depend on youth policy and the coaching ability of Gordon Jago. Yesterday, my was taken by one of the homegrown players. I've mentioned him before, his name is Jerry Francis, and I think he has quite a future in front of him. He's got a bit to do yet, but I was impressed with the area of the field that he covered, and the way in which he was ready to defend when the occasion demanded it and here how he shows his skill to wriggle out of a tight position and then just eases the ball off with the outside of his foot. He spreads the play out well, no lack of ability with, with either foot to pass the ball. Operating in the middle of the field and generally, he's gen generally there when moves are breaking up from the other side and then he'll come away as a springboard to initiate an attack and then pick it up 
after there. But what I really liked about him yesterday were a couple of occasions when he was shooting. And he showed what a good shot he's got in his left foot. You can see he dribbles mostly on his right foot, but there's power in that left foot and accuracy. That was another fine save down by the post from Irwin. But look at this first time shot here from, from Francis. As it's rolled across, he runs in. That's a really class shot by any standards. But they're a bright, enterprising side. Stan Bowles is a, an entertaining player, and I think they're going to be in touch with the leaders at least until the later stage of the season when it'll be the sprint home. Well, just before we leave Rangers, I must just show you a little laugh they had with Jimmy and I in their programme yesterday, referring back uh, with these couple of cartoons to the day that Jimmy had as a linesman. The, the top one, you've got the disgruntled cameraman as Jim and I stand poised to go on, saying, I only get to go on if both linesman and ref get the cramp. And below it, we have Jim, who's got on and is now saying, And I said, no go. Or would you rather wait and be proved wrong tomorrow afternoon? So our thanks to Rangers for that. And the cartoons, in fact, there were by Len Marshall. Well, our last game today must go down as one of the very best in the First Division yesterday. Uh, there were plenty of goals to it, but there was also a special quality about one or two of them. It's Wolves against Queen's Park Rangers from Molyneux. The pictures come from ATV. The commentator, Hugh Johns, QPR, are in the hoops. Hibbert. Dugan, wide on this touchline. Hibbert. For Daly. Reaching for Dugan across the box for Richards. Gets it down and scores. And eventually it had to happen. A minute and a half left of the first half, and John Richards scores his second goal of the season. All building up with Daly's long ball. Mancini held off. Dugan as he knocks it across the box. Richards goes round Leach. Left. Park standing with the final shot. Well, it certainly looks as though uh, Don Givens really did get a bad bang. They've got John Delve warming up on the sideline, so obviously the substitution is going to be made. John Delve. But they're not bringing Delve on. They're obviously going to see first whether they can get uh, Givens fit, I think. So we're going on, and Rangers are at 10 men as the free kick's taken, and Bowles takes the shot now, and he gets the equaliser! There it is, 1-1! One, one. 15 minutes into the second half, and Stan Bowles, a very happy number 10. Split second, hesitation by Wolves, and it's in the back of the net. Monroe up there. Hibbert. Dugan, for Callion, and it wouldn't come down for Richards. Hegan. Well, it would not come down for him. For a moment, it looked as though Wolves had nosed in front. But while this is all going on, Dugan is wandering away to the touchline. And uh, Sammy Chung is signalling. Dugan comes off. Dugan comes off. Sunderland goes on. Fraction over 20 minutes of the game left. 
Francis on the break for Rangers. Not a bad ball. Leach is over that far side to exert the pressure again. But a goal kick. No, a corner. It did come off uh, pivot. Crowd deeply unhappy about Dugan being taken off. Thomas with the uh, corner. Mancini. Leach. What a great goal! Two on the Rangers. Twenty-three and a half minutes into the second half, and Rangers have come from being one down at the end of the first half to take a two-one lead. Mick Leach, the scorer. The corner ball by Thomas. Mancini getting the head. And a most acrobatic kick by Leach. Cannoning the ball in off the underside of the crossbar. So, there's a surprising scoreline. For a long time in the first half, we thought we were going to get no goals at all. Hibbit. Now Daly for Wolves. They've really got to work now. I don't know, it's there. And I think Sunderland has got it. Sunderland and McClintock went there. Sunderland slipped. Certainly claiming it for himself. One minute after Leach puts Rangers in front. Wolves 11. That hard hit ball across the face of the goal. Sunderland went for it with McClintock. And I'm pretty certain that Sunderland got the touch and it went in the net. Here's Park in now for Wolves. Chased by John Richards. Still 2 2. Scoreline. Leach with the throw. Well won by Hibbert. And back by Francis. Won again by Hibbert. Free kick given. Ball spreads his arm in uh, disbelief. Park in. Leaving it for Daly. A good head. Sunderland was the boy. Got on the end of it. And Thomas absolutely streaking out for Rangers. Over the side is Bowles. Has he seen him? He has. He can't miss it, surely. He didn't! What a glorious move out! The scoreline is 3-2 in favour of Rangers now. Seven minutes to go. And there was an attack of Wolves which breaks down. Thomas made a 50-yard run down that left side, saw Bowles in the middle, knocked the ball into him, and Bowles did the rest. Gets his second goal of the game. 3-2. Foul by Taylor on Thomas. Number 12, substitute. John Dell leads the ball. Venable's kick. Dell. Venables. It's Hazel. Venables. Bowles, Venables, Francis Bowles, Francis, and through his leech and he's onside, he could still get there, Parkin knocks it away, well that very nearly was another one, the Rangers will be well satisfied with this afternoon's work. position with 10 points and at this moment they've got 12 points 
Wolves, on the other hand, started the game with eight points, and they've still only got eight points. They were 19th before today's game started. The wrong end of the table for, uh, for Bill McGarry's boys. Rangers full value for this performance here. Clock in. Cole. Mancini kept his head then. Pivot. Uh, Calio. Daly. Hegan. Oh, bunched in the box. There's nobody wide. Kick Taylor in Hazel getting the corner away. Thomas stops it. That's a good safe ball when you're 3 2 up away from home. And Leach could make something of this one. Bowles has gone galloping to the middle again, unmarked. And a penalty it is. McCall, the man who brings down Leach. So, are we going to have 4 2? Terry Venables, I think, is the fellow they'll call up to uh, have a go at the penalty. He's had one already this season against Stoke in a 3-3 result. No, it's Francis placing the ball down there. Coolly. So that race by Leach. McCall stops him, and the penalty. Francis takes it. It's 4-2 Rangers. A minute and a half of the game left. And a very, very unhappy afternoon for Wolves now. From 1-0 up in the first half, they're dragged back at 4-2. Yes, a brilliant victory by QPR. Well done. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today because the big match people wanted to bring a touch of class and style to their Christmas programme. We've given the push to Brian Moore, Brian Clough and Malcolm Allison for this week. And I've got a couple of old mates, especially one of them, here, here to help me out. They are John Hollins of Chelsea and Paddy Mancini of QPR. So let's start with some football. And Brian Moore was at QPR yesterday for the match against uh, Newcastle. First out of Queen's Park Rangers, led by Terry Venables, a side that's lost a little of the momentum that it had at the start of the season. And indeed, they've not won in their last six games. For this match, Queen's Park Rangers make one change in defence, where Ian Gillard comes in at number three for only his second league game of the season. He replaces Tony Hazel, and Ron Abbott is named a substitute. Newcastle have also had many injury problems this season. They are still without their top striker, Malcolm McDonald, and their manager, Joe Harvey, keeps the side that had a handsome victory over Dundee United in the Texaco Cup in midweek. There's no doubt we should be keeping an eye on Terry Mancini in the heart of the QPR defence today. Woe betide him if he puts a foot wrong. And then there's Bobby Moncur, that strong skipper from Newcastle. Thomas again. Now can he make use of his speed? Hibbert going back, and he shrugged him off well. Thomas, a delicate little pass, and Hibbert to the header. Just over. Leach and Givens at the far post. As Thomas turned that over beautifully, up they went. And somehow McFall kept it out, and it was Givens who finally turned it over. It's with Howard. Towards Tudor. Mancini getting above him, but here's uh, Cassidy now as they take it through to Robson, and it'll be with Cassidy again with a scoring chance here for Newcastle. Oh, and he's wide! What a miss! He got them going the wrong way, not once but twice, and that included the goalkeeper, Phil Parks. And then Tommy Cassidy put it wide. Bowles. Leach. Flicked on there beautifully by Venables to Francis. Played on in turn. For Clement, can he get the shot in? Oh, yes! Dave Clement! And that's 1-0 for Queen's Park Rangers with 26 minutes gone. Started with the flick by Venables, turned on by Francis then to Clement, and he hit it wide of the fall and in off the far post, 1-0. Craig joining up with the attack again, Hibbert. And now Leach. Now Rangers with three men up, and it's three against four. The break is on for them, still with Leach. There's Francis available on this side, now Bowles. 
played this time for Venables. Francis supporting him. Here's Francis. Crossed in again. Givens is coming up late. There's Givens! So Don Givens makes it 2-0. And Newcastle have themselves to blame as the rain really comes hurtling down now. That long cross over from the left. A misunderstanding between Moncur and I think uh, McFall. And Givens coming in late to pick his spot. Hibbert and Howard are standing behind it. And it's Hibbert who chips it. And it's Tudor who goes in. And it's McDermott who blasts one. And it's gone in off the number three. I think it's an own goal there, off Gillard. But it's an own goal. And Newcastle are right back in the hunt. McDermott, a tremendous shot. The deflection going in off the uh, Rangers defender. And Newcastle are right in it again. And now Mancini playing for Thomas in a lot of space. And the crowd are roaring him on. Cross there on the far side towards Bowles. Oh, and he missed his kick. And Thomas, no! Stopped miraculously there by McFall. Well, I thought that was going in the back of the net. An optical illusion from this angle looked as though it was sure to go in. But it's still 2-1 to Rangers. Francis at the near post for this corner. Mancini lying deep as the corner comes in low this time. Now it's uh, Gibb low and hard. Oh, and it almost went there. And still it's not there. My word, how on earth did that one stay out? As it went across one side, came across the other, and finally it was put just wide there by Cassidy. And again, Newcastle have come within uh, a feathery touch of getting uh, an equaliser. Hibbert, Terry McDermott, played into space again there for Robson, still with Robson. This could be very dangerous for Rangers until he gives it away to Don Givens. Hibbert again. McDermott. And is that a free kick that's been given? It's a free kick that's been given. An indirect free kick that's been given. And the, Red, the Newcastle players are saying, well, if it's anything, it's got to be a penalty. But uh, referee Kirchhoff has given an indirect free kick some eight yards from the goal. You take the six-yard line as being six yards, say nine yards, that Rangers wall, to be fair, has got to be almost at the near post. Well, they're a good three yards or so off that near post at the moment, but this could be very dangerous in the last couple of minutes. Hibbert playing it wide there, Moncur hitting it through, and it's there! And they've equalised, and it's Bobby Moncur who's done it. Well, Moncur came in, Hibbert, that little pass from the free kick, when Newcastle thought it should have been a penalty, and Moncur through a crowd of players, giving Parks no chance. Pulled back the two goals, but here's Thomas again with another deep cross towards McLeach. Moncur, the number six on his back, obliterated by the mud, and here's Leach. Got Francis free, but very few seconds are left. Here's Venables turning it in for Bowles. And he scored! Stan Bowles has made it 3 2. Well, one comeback after another. Newcastle had pulled back the two goals and seemed to have won themselves a point. And now, in the last seconds of the game, as the ball comes through to Bowles, a minimum of backlift, and that's 3 2. Well, in case you've just tuned in, I want to tell you there's a bit of player power on the big match today with me, Alan Ball, Johnny Hollins and Paddy Mancini taking over for the day. Well, let's look at the QPR match with John Hollins and Terry Mancini. Well, welcome, Henry, to the Alan Ball Show. The Alan Ball Show? <laughs> with that jacket, I thought it was a Charlie Caroli show. <laughs> well, let's get serious now, Henry. I, yes. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> quite honestly. Yes. No, um, <laughs> about yesterday's game, it certainly looked uh, very exciting, the action we've seen this afternoon. Could you uh, 
give us a few well for the crowd well. crowd wise it was a great game i mean uh, it could have been seven five the the amount of chances and everything that went but uh entertainment wise for the crowd great very not too good for the manager though <laughs> the old dodgy mince has come up again <laughs> very difficult for defenders turning ideal for the, the forwards taking people on yeah yeah very awkward you know if you were committed that was it you it was very difficult to turn mind you i have trouble turning anyway <laughs> well i no i wouldn't like to say that Henry. oh thank I you very much thank you but the, the the players themselves I, I should think they were very tired after that match it took a lot yeah of it was um it was a very hard game i mean newcastle came especially in the second half they came at us and uh, they deservedly, I thought, got back level. What do you think about uh, the scene in London at the moment, the way we're struggling? I'm, I'm, your exception, I think you're doing ever so well for your first season up, but I think overall the London clubs are really struggling. What do you think about that? I mean, I think there's a chance of maybe one or two of the London clubs going down. Yeah, I... For uh, me, you know, I think... Maybe well, a little have, bit you, have you played against the two? Have you played against played the two against, sides I'm we're talking about? Not particularly. I've, I've, I watched one game and played against the other. Yeah, we, um, you know, West Ham are going through a, a sticky patch at the moment. You're talking about West Ham. Uh, no, I said two teams will go down. Yeah. I think Spurs might, you might put them amongst West Ham as well at the moment because I think they're really oh, struggling. Oh, you're biased, <laughs> No, I think player-wise and the way they're talking about one another, it's bad feeling in the club. And I think once you get that, I think you're going to struggle. You gotta, yeah. You've got to win these matches on, on spirit as well. You've got to Correct. dig it out. Enthusiasm, right. just enthusiasm for the game of, of wanting to play. If you don't want to play, yeah. then this is where we're, we're, we're coming out on top at the moment at the bush because um, yeah. we've got a great bunch of lads. Things are going well for us, which obviously helps course, a lot. Of course, yeah. But the lads, great. I've got to give them a mention. <laughs> give me some stick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, you two, that's enough. Or as Charlie George would say, right. You know <laughs> what I mean? Welcome again to the big match. Well, in the London area, at least, it's the sort of afternoon to stay indoors. And in the next hour or so, we can make it well worth your while by bringing you some enthralling football. Because our main match today is the wonderful game between Queen's Park Rangers and Manchester United. The head-on clash of two of the First Division's unbeaten teams. And our guest from that match is David Webb, the Queen's Park Rangers defender. But first of all today, we move off to West London, where Loftus Road was buzzing with the prospect of the arrival of Manchester United, their first visit of the season to the capital, and of course heading the first division table. So these are the men then who face a stern test against Queen's Park Rangers today. Queen's Park Rangers against Manchester United. It really has a ring about it. And let's first of all sort out the two teams for the game. Rangers, in fact, will field the side that won in the League Cup at Shrewsbury in midweek. And that means that you can see Mickey Leach keeping the number four shirt and leaving Johnny Hollins as a substitute. As for Manchester United, they've had a late shock. Brian Greenoff is unfit, so Tommy Doherty plunges another of his youngsters, 18-year-old Scottish boy Arthur Alberston, into the defence for this uh, first game of the season. A little lucky with that one. He was a bit slow to get to it. And now Thomas. The Red Shirts are swarming back, two, four, six, seven of them in defence. Jerry Francis there winning it in the air, and Houston under trouble. As Leach went in, and a corner to Cupia. Gillard going right up on the goal line. It's already taken, though, as Bowles turns it in. Gillard with a header against the crossbar. Yes! It's David Webb. quickly taken, it caught Manchester United out, Gillard managed to flick it on from the near post, and David Webb finished it off with a header. Jackson. Well, he's given that to Thomas. What can Thomas do about it? 
while his pace carried him past the youngster there. There's the cross going in for Gibbons. Oh, my goodness. Superb play by Rangers. Capitalising on the undoubted pace of Thomas. And then as the ball came in, the sweeping skills of Don Gibbons, just a fraction too high. Good challenge by Gillard. Now Thomas. Good ball by Thomas. And a good piece of running by Stan Bowles too. Turn to near post. Oh, and a great save there by Stepney. But above everything else, another brilliant Rangers move. Bowles and Gibbons combining so well. And Gibbons just failing to turn it in. Stepney doing supremely well for Manchester United. McClintock. Francis. So often, though, when the crowd baits Stan Bowles, it's Stan Bowles who has the last laugh. Francis. And Francis going on to take that one from Leach. The feet were high there. My goodness, those Manchester United feet were high on Jerry Francis. I don't think they paid to get in. Massa with the free kick for Rangers. Deep towards Mickey Leach. Thomas will hope to get on this as well. He's taken down and a penalty given. A foul by Buchan, a penalty to Rangers. And this is the moment for Bowles. I would have thought, and I wonder whether they'll give it to Bowles. No doubt that when uh, Buchan challenged Dave Thomas, that the referee had no alternative to give the penalty. And Bowles now, with the chance to put Queen's Park Rangers 2-0 into the lead, and to silence those Manchester United fans who baited him for so long in the first half. Now, Stan Bowles, the responsibility on his shoulders against Alex Stepney, and Stepney has saved it the first time, and he saved it the second time, and they're getting it away now, Manchester United, no, a free kick given, but the penalty has been missed by Stan Bowles. And I wonder when the last time was that uh, Bowles, who is so good and so cool with penalties, could have missed one. But Stepney dives smartly to his right there. And Bowles was denied. To Koppel and now to McElroy. Now Don Givens. He's all right, he's onside. All he's got to do is to find the angle and he's put it wide. Well, that was a remarkable miss there by Don Givens because he seemed to have done everything right. And he found a yard and screwed it just wide when in fact he got both Bowles and Thomas outside him unmarked. And indeed it was a game to savour. And our congratulations to the Queen's Park Rangers administration. They'd obviously done their homework and there was very little trouble with the crowd. I think the only perplexing thing is to wonder why Rangers didn't win by more. And of course one of the reasons for that is that they missed a penalty. And we thought you'd like to see again a little exchange between Stan Bowles, the man who missed it, and Alex Stepney, the man who saved it, during an interview we had on World of Sport yesterday. I asked Stan Bowles what happened. Well, you know, I'd made up my mind where to put it uh, straight away, and uh, fortunately for Alec, you know, he went the right way. <laughs> Do you think he moved? Uh, well, I've got to say he moved, don't I? <laughs> what about it, Alec? Had you made up your mind to go that way before? Um, yes, I did, yeah. Um, I'd like to know what Stan was saying to me before he took the kick. That was the main thing. What, was he, what were you saying to him before you took the kick? Well, Alec had been playing so well, I said, you'll probably go and save this one as well, and he did. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little fruitier than that, was I it? I think it was, yeah. Right, let's sort out a couple of those points. One, did Stan and Alec have words before the kick was taken? And indeed, did Alec Stepney move before the kick was taken? You'll notice now how Stan Bowles moves in from the left of the picture there. That's where he's having a word with Alec Stepney. I think Alec's probably giving him something back as well. But the other interesting thing that I want you to watch out for now is the Manchester United number nine, Stuart Pearson there. Obviously, Alex Stepney decided to go to the right, and I think Stuart Pearson in a moment, there he is, reminding him of that's what he's got to do. And away comes Stan Bowles now to kick this ball, and happily the ball is shielded by Lou Macari there. But I think you will agree that Alex Stepney does move there quite clearly before the kick was taken. But he got away with it. He made his save. He made a brave second save there as well as Stan Bowles came in. And Stan Bowles, therefore, missed his first ever penalty in the Football League, although he's missed one in the Cup. But now let's meet the man whose goals separated those two sides yesterday, David Webb of Queen's Park Rangers. First of all, I think we ought to say how nicely Stan Bowles had combed his hair for that interview, David. <laughs> well, he's always pinching everyone's combs, so he should, he should have a nice combed hair. <laughs> Pinches one or two from you. Oh, he's had about three off of me. What about your goal now? 
Well, I was a bit uh, fortunate in, in as much that they took the corner a bit quickly. And uh, I think Stuart Pearson dwelt a little bit as I was getting to the edge of the box. And he allowed me to get behind him. And as the ball, Ian Gill had done fantastic get up and heading it. And headed it against the crossbar. In fact, we see you arriving fairly late on the scene. They're at the bottom of the picture now. That's correct. I think uh, you see he looks at me there, then he turns away and then he starts to watch the ball. It therefore gave me just a little bit of a chance to get behind him. And as in it, it, it hits the crossbar, and it allows me just where I like to be with my head. Bowles produced moments of magic again yesterday, didn't he? Well, he's a fantastic player, Stan. He's, I mean, I think he's one of those naturally gifted players that uh, he'd probably play to his 40, the way he plays as well, because he's got an enthusiasm for the game, mm. which is unparalleled. Well, David, it's nice to see you happy and settled, and good to see Rangers doing so well towards the top of the table. Thank you very much for coming in, Dave. Thank you, Brian. match Queen's Park Rangers against Sunderland and looking at that game for us England and Queen's Park Rangers skipper Jerry Francis who's of course not played this season because of a back injury but first we move off to West London to Loftus Road the home of Queen's Park Rangers where the visitors of bottom club Sunderland Rangers stimulated by their midweek draw in Czechoslovakia it's the same team in fact but for one place Parks in goal Clement McClintock Webb and Gillard Hollins, Masson and Eddie Kelly, who comes in, he couldn't play in uh, Czechoslovakia, he was ineligible. Bowles, Gibbons and Thomas up front. And here is Eddie Kelly. Strange to see him, really, in anything other than an Arsenal shirt. As for Sunderland, not one member of this side played in the 73 Cup final. And now, and now of course, Bob Stoko has resigned as well. Siddle in goal, Ashurst, Clark, Holton and Bolton. Raoul, Towers, Train and Poggin. Greenwood and Lee with Henderson there substitute. They spent a lot of money and a lot of time looking for big names. Jim Holton on loan from Manchester United. Also, of course, there's Roy Greenwood, £140,000 buy from Hull City, and Bob Lee, a record for the club, £200,000 from Leicester, and two men in the crowd from crisis clubs. There's West Ham's Ron Greenwood leaning over there. They play Rangers this week, and Sunderland caretaker manager Ian McFarlane. Gibbons allowing a go to Bowles, and away goes Gibbons. Now, can he silence those critical fans now? He can't, and it's a free kick right on the edge of the area. Bowles is furious there, arguing with the referee, claiming that that was inside the box. I must say my immediate view was that it was inside, but Alf Gray, the referee, said outside is where the first challenge was made. And so outside the area, it's got to be. Gibbons was certainly clear there. And it was the referee's view that it was outside. It comes to Masson, it comes to Gillard, a free shot and a brilliant save. Well, the short touch from the free kick. Finally allowed it to go to Gillard, who had the space for a left foot shot. Hit it well, superb piece of goalkeeping by Barry Siddall. Holton up well. Still not happy where the wall is, is Siddall, and he's dancing about there on his line. Masson leaving it this time for Hollins to drive it through the wall, and somehow he got there, McClintock! Well, Tony Tower said, how on earth did that get through the wall? But in fact, Hollins blasted it through the wall, it just nicked the wall, in fact and took that deflection that uh, fooled Siddall, he got his hand to it, 
McClintock was right in there to finish it off. Kelly playing it nice and wide there. Good skillful pass there to Dave Thomas. Now, will he take on Ashurst as he has so often in the first half? On to the right foot. A low shot just wide of the post. He's always looked dangerous doing that. He certainly got the measure of the Sunderland number two today. Turned inside on this occasion, got it onto his favourite right foot, and just cracked it maybe a yard, no more wide. Thomas after this one. Oh, just wide again. He's bound to make one of those count very soon. From that quick throw, he outwitted them all, and Thomas really let that go. And again, just wide. But I wonder what Ashurst can do with this. Holton's come up again. Greenwood's made a run towards the near post. And Holton got the header in. And my goodness, it almost went home. Well, after saying that they didn't really look to be in great danger, Holton got what virtually was a free header, nodded it down, Parks went scrambling across his line. The ball hit the post and he somehow just managed to keep it out. Well, that might spur Rangers on a bit. But first, they've got to get away from this corner situation. Sunderland have piled a few people forward, including Clark. And it's another corner. No, it's not. The ball not out of play yet. But now they can come away. And Thomas, the man, probably the fastest of all, and Bowles onside. Sutter's come roaring out of his goal. Now, what will Bowles do? Onto the left foot, he'll hope. No, onto the right foot. That's there, that's two, and that's Bowles. That's got every man off his seat as the ball flashed from one end to the other when Sunderland lost possession. When Sunderland lost possession, it found its way to Thomas. He played it sensibly the first time. Bowles was on it like a flash. Turned them one way, turned them the other, and found the shot that made it 2-0. Well, I think everyone there yesterday agreed that Rangers deserve to win, and many of them, of course, would have echoed the growing cry that Stan Bowles now really has established himself as a strong England candidate. That's something I want to talk to Rangers and England skipper Jerry Francis about in a moment. But first of all, Jerry, sadly you've not played this season. A trapped nerve in the back, which... I presume it's still pretty painful. Um, well, it's not too bad now, Brian. Um, basically, um, it's about 80% better, and I'm just waiting for the last part of it to uh, get better. And um, maybe I might start training next Monday. You've been to a whole string of specialists. Uh, I gather that rest is the only thing, though, is it? That, uh, yes, it seems that uh, this, is, this is what we come down to now, is just uh, rest. I've been resting for five weeks doing nothing, yeah. which is... Uh, very difficult. And you say you, you, you might start training when? Maybe on Monday, but it depends um, what the doctor says on Monday. Yeah, it'd be very, very slow training anyway, very, very slight. It must have been very frustrating for you, but at least it's given you a chance to have a good look and a detached look at your teammates. What do you think of QPR yesterday, for example? Well, I thought basically there was only one side in it, really. Um, uh, Sunderland um, looked uh, what they are at the moment, a team that's struggling at the bottom of the first division. And um, once uh, QPR got the first goal, I felt that they could have got more than two, but as it was, they only got two. But they played very well in passage, very well. Yeah. Stan Bowles, and a great cry for him to be an England player, with Italy in mind as well. You're the England skipper, although, of course, you haven't played yeah. this season, as you said. Do you see Bowles for England? Well, I don't think it's been any secret that, um, that I've always said what a great player Stan is, and I've played with him for five years now. And um, he would most certainly help me in the England side, and uh, I know that I could help him like we have at Rangers. And, um, I've always said all along that I think he should be on the England side, but as I say, I don't pick the side. You see, people talk about his attitude. Now, you, you are closer to him than most people. They wonder about his attitude, whether it's right. Well, his attitude on the field is right. I, I've never had any problems with his attitude on the field whatsoever. He's, um, he hates to lose. He's a good competitor. And um, there's only times when sometimes uh, a few problems off the field has affected his game on the field. And that's the only time that I've got to worry as a captain. But... Um, uh, the way he's been behaving and the way he's been playing over the last um, three or four months has been excellent and um, I, I can't see that uh, there's any problems with Stan whatsoever. Uh, let, me, let me try and put you on the spot. Would you, would you pick him for the game in Rome? I would pick him, yeah, if I was manager of the England team, but um, 
I'm not, you know, so uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So let's start at Loftus Road with the game between Queen's Park Rangers and Manchester City, two sides, in fact going through a bad time at the moment, but what a rousing game they produced. And City also paraded that recent signing of theirs from Poland. And here's Kazimierz Zdena, Kazi to his teammates. And the last time he played in a competitive game in London was that little affair at Wembley in 1973 when he helped Poland to knock England out of the World Cup. It's his third game for Manchester City since he joined the club from Legia of Warsaw. He now faces this Queen's Park Rangers side that's won only twice at home this season, but now has Jerry Francis fit again after knee trouble and Stan Bowles back in the side after a three-match suspension. And again, uh, you'll notice Jerry Francis today in a striking role, not as a midfield player. Manchester City, like Queen's Park Rangers, having a bad time at the moment. Uh, they've dropped Brian Kidd from their attack. Colin Bell has gone as well, but they'll be encouraged now by the return after injury of Peter Barnes on their wings. Stan Bowles, Rashid Harkook, a little chip through for Isto, just over. Well, they very nearly uh, got through there. Some nice play on the edge of the Manchester City penalty area, finally putting Peter Isto free. Well timed run by him, but not quite the skill to get it over the massive Joe Corrigan and under the crossbar. It just went over. Barnes. Hartford. He let fly. Oh, well, he did, and he caught Rhoda. And the rebound foul for Bowles, and now for Haku. And he's gone past Watson. He's got Easto in there as well. The short pass, oh, what a pity. Bowles was furious with uh, Harcook for not playing it back for him, but now there might be trouble at the other end as Power finds his way through, looks for someone to pass to. It's Dana, who can't get his shot in, but gets a free kick. What a great run by Harcook at the other end, though. And with Easto in a beautiful position up there, he couldn't find him and a chance was lost. And then at the other end, when it looked as though Dana might get a shot in, he's pulled down right on the edge of the QPR penalty area. And so there could be a problem here for Rangers. After being so close to what seemed to be a scoring position with that break by Rashid Harkouk. Five men in the wall, and I'm quite sure that referee Eric Reid from Bristol will want the wall to go back a little more than that. As you can see, he's waving optimistically. Mike Shannon is also in the wall there. Who's going to have a go? Will it be Dana? No, it's Peter Barnes, and it reflected. Oh, my word, and it deflected onto the post. I think off Vicky Shannon. <laughs> Peter Barnes, as you can see there, saying, well, I bent it, but I didn't mean to bend it that far. Barnes hit it. What a deflection, with Phil Parks going quite the wrong way, the ball bouncing off the post. The ball now with Hakuk. Well, Easto did well there. Here's Hamilton. And he did well also in finding Gillard, sidestepping his man. Well, Hamilton! Oh, what a brilliant goal! Well, the substitution truly has worked. What a magnificent goal by the young Irishman. Exactly what Rangers wanted. True skills, explosive finishing as Gillard sidestepped his man, crossed in well, 
and Hamilton hit it as it came in, almost a horizontal volley. Hartford, this really is an entertaining game now, as Hartford takes it up again for City. There's a bit of space for Powell, will he get his shot and he will, and what a good save. My word, it's just flashing from one end of the field to the other now. And the crowd are making a lot of noise and really getting into this game and enjoying it. The shot from Power, beautifully pushed aside by Phil Parks. Knocked on there by Hamilton again, and Watson there quickly in. And certainly, uh, Billy Hamilton has made a bit of a difference. Not only that brilliant goal he scored, but he's uh, a big lad who knocked that ball on well. Bowles now turning it in for Clement. And yes! It's pushed behind again by Billy Hamilton for the second goal. Dave Clement had a big part in that, really popping up in a strong attacking position, got the ball over, and Billy Hamilton nodded it down in. 2 nothing. Well, that really is a most miraculous substitution, because now in 10 minutes of play in this second half, since Billy Hamilton has come on, he's transformed the whole game, scored both the goals for QPR. Shannon in there, trying to get Barnes on his way. It's a nice cross by Barnes, but Ernie Howe there. Hartford there. Oh, and what a good save! Dana turning it back again, and this time Clement putting it behind. Hartford with a really bullet-like shot, which was bound for goal. An acrobatic piece of keeping, though, by Phil Fox. Paul Futcher to his brother Ron. Ten minutes left. Hartford. Ernie Howe, and he's let in power. And down goes Phil Parks again. What a mistake by Ernie Howe there. And Paul Power looks certain to be in to make it 2-1. But he flicked at it and didn't hit it powerfully enough, and Phil Parks was down. Futcher. Now for Donaghy. Now for Shannon. Played in firmly there. Looked for the one-two. And got it back again. Shannon. And a goal given for Mike Shannon. That familiar wheeling arm. But uh, I think probably more a gesture than anything else at the moment. Because, as I say, we're in injury time now. They are 2-1 down. There might be a glimmer of a chance. It was nicely played. Shannon was involved in the build-up from the word go. And he was there to take the finishing touch and play it just wide off Phil Parks. What a valuable win for Rangers. And what an entertaining game it was. And surely we saw the quickest reward for a substitution you're ever likely to see with Billy Hamilton scoring twice within ten minutes of coming on. What about the performance of that young Irishman? Here's the Rangers manager, Steve Burtonshaw. Well, frankly, he had, when he played last week at Coventry, he had much better chances and much more of them. But... Yes. Uh, he failed to um, convert them. Today, he had uh, certainly a much more difficult first goal, and uh, he struck it beautifully. Yes. I can understand why you don't want him to appear on television today, because I think his feet are probably about 10 feet off the ground at the moment. Well, right? yeah, I mean, if you consider, Brian, he, he came over uh, about last June from Ireland. You know, it's all happening for the lad. And, um, I, you know, I'd, he's not a big-headed sort of boy, uh, so it won't go to his head. But he is um, he's over the moon at the moment, and... Uh, we don't understand him fully, quite frankly. I mean, his Irish brogue is so, so <laughs> thick, we still don't understand him. There may be our viewers wouldn't either. Maybe they quite. would in Northern Ireland quite yeah, easily. That though. may be true. Yeah. It was an important win for you today, after so long without a win, ten games without a win. Um, do you feel a sense of relief at this moment? Well, obviously a sense of relief. And uh, for, the, for myself, yes, certainly. For the, for the spectators, um, you know, and certainly for the players. Because I feel that uh, we've not played that badly, quite frankly. We have played uh, reasonably well, and sometimes much better than reasonably well. And we certainly have uh, made the chances, but we just haven't converted them. We haven't, in fact, put the ball in the net. And at the end of the day, that's basically what it's all about, isn't it?
tonight's Derby County against Queen's Park Rangers at the baseball ground, where Rangers new manager Terry Venables was seeing his side in action for the first time. The pictures are from ATV. The commentator is Hugh John. At 35 years of age, Hector considered himself as a standby player when re-signing here 10 days ago. But a serious injury crisis took him into the side last week and again today. Skivington, Wilson and Frank Sheridan, his first team debut, are also drafted in as emergency replacements for injured regulars. For Rangers, Andy King, their September signing from Everton, this pitch has been a happy hunting ground. He scored twice here in a 3-1 win for Everton in only his second outing in the First Division back in 76. And in all, he's played against Derby six times, scoring four goals. King, a £425,000 buy from Everton, has yet to open his account for this Rangers side, which now gets its first chance to show their new boss what they can do. Hard long one. Hector, nicely down. Sheridan, Hector. And here comes Empson. Far post ball. Oh, good goal! And Sheridan's the boy that's got it! Five minutes into the game, his very first game for his club, Derby. And Frank Sheridan, the Londoner, has put Derby in front. Good header, Woods beaten on his left-hand post. Here's Barry Powell, will lose that to Neil. Langley feeds it on, that's a good one for Andy King. Could this be his first goal for Rangers? Yes, and it's 1-1. Lovely little touch, kept his head. Seven minutes. Andy King scores his first goal for Queen's Park Rangers. Rangers fans are delighted. He went in on that header beautifully. And this is where he keeps cool and just rolls it, strokes it past Jones, just into the corner. And now Sheridan, oh, Sheridan's banging it back to Buckley. Had time to turn, in fact. That's a foul in the back by Rhoda. Referee allows play to go on. Advantage to uh, Derby. Empson. Well taken by Waddock. What a good little player that is. Shanks. Well won back by Empson. Yes, and Shanks penalised for holding him back. So Buckley goes over to take the free kick. And once again, Rangers anxiously bring ten back into their own box. That'll come down to Sheridan. Frank Sheridan, what a day for this youngster. Nine minutes, ten minutes into the... Nine and a half minutes into the second half. Oh, this is a game that Frank Sheridan's going to live in his memories forever. Scored the first goal for Derby, and here he buries the second beautifully. It's Powell. Rhoda. Neil for Langley, it looks useful. Oh. <laughs> Roger Jones closed his legs just in time there. Here's the, the build. Nice little through ball for Langley. And it was trying to slide it through Jones's legs. He closed them just in time and gave the corner away. Buckley's header out. Hector for Wilson. Good ball. Skivington must give it early to Empson. One on one. It's a race now. Here's Empson. And it's in there. Only just, only just when it counts. 3 1 Derby. Empson the scorer. Empson's second goal of the season. All starting there, an early ball then from Wilson, Skivington spotting Empson, all on his own going down that left side. Enormous chase back. Shanks tried to get there, Woods came off his line, hits one post, crossed the goal, trickles in off the other one.
these two teams have made a bit of history. They met in the League Cup earlier this season. First time anybody's gone through in an FA Cup tie or a League Cup tie. With uh, no goals being scored, but Langley's going to get one here. Well, well, well. That was remarkable. That was so simple for Tommy Langley, and it's 3-2 now. Means Park Rangers back in the game. Still ten minutes to go. Is Langley in fact starting it off? Well, in fact, glides the ball back to Langley, and he's got an empty net to pop the ball into. Rhoda places the ball. The free kick. And Rangers populate the penalty area. Gillard got the touch, and King gets the goal. It's 3-3. Andy King. Well, he hadn't scored for Rangers till he came here today. And now he's got two. And Terry Venables is delighted up in the box. There's a free kick from Rhoda. That touch on from Gillard. And a little side flick from Andy King, and it's 3-3. 3-3 was the final score with Rangers getting those two goals in the last 10 minutes. Quite a comeback there. Today we tread new ground by bringing you football on the new artificial surface at Queen's Park Rangers as QPR face their London neighbours Crystal Palace. Over the past 12 months the clubs have done such a lot of transfer business together well yesterday it was almost like an old boys reunion but the biggest talking point of all of course was the pitch itself. Well it looks like real grass uh, Terry but what sort of game can we expect on it today? Um, well it's a game where you have got to be very careful with the ball and what I find is all the things you preach when we're training on here is uh, just magnifies what you should be doing anyway. You've got to have a good first touch of the ball, you've got to have a lot of care on your pass and otherwise if you hit it in a general direction which you're inclined to do on grass or other pitches that it will run away from people. So you've got to be precise and I think in the end that will uh, cause players to be a lot better players through it. What detracts from it at the moment from the game? What are the things against the surface at the moment? Um, Mainly because it's brand new. If we've always had it, I think we would always be happy with it. But when you've got players that have played all their life on something different, it's natural that they're a little bit concerned about change. Yes, people talk about friction marks, burns and so on, if they go in uh, and fall on the, on the surface. What about that? Um, yes, the worst two burns we've had was Tony Curry and Fennick. Terry Fennick, and that was on grass, so it's really? very difficult. Yeah. The, you, you, you're inclined to um, graze, but it's more superficial. It stings for a while, but that's an occupational hazard. Well, as well as the pitch, something else is new here. 32 private boxes costing from £4,000 a season upwards, and so it's a big day for the lucky people watching football this way. It's a big day, too, for five of this Queen's Park Rangers side. They've got a bit of a score to settle against old teammates. They used to be at Crystal Palace. John Burridge, Terry Fennick, Clive Allen, Mike Flanagan, and Tony Seeley. They all had spells at Selhurst Park, and Jerry Francis did as well, but he's out of the side today. Tactically, Rangers will have uh, Fennick at right back, uh, Ian Gillard at left back, with a former Brighton man, John Gregory, moved into midfield. And to add to the togetherness of it all, two of the Palace players were once here at Queen's Park Rangers, Steve Wicks and Tommy Langley. This indeed is the same Palace side that we saw play with such style on the big match last weekend and beat Charlton 2-0. <laughs> Hazel for Rangers. Curry. Everything still starts with Tony Curry. This time trying to get Allen in a bit of freedom down the there, but there's no doubt about it that the star of this show at the moment is this fellow here, Billy Gilbert. 
Had a really excellent game at the back for Crystal Palace. He's got in some tackles when they badly wanted them. Oh, Gillard doing well, beating Bass on the little chip there to the far side. Curry's coming in. Oh, yes, it's there at the end from Stainwood. his book I think Jim Cannon the Palace captain and so Clive Allen now with the opportunity of putting Rangers two into the lead and he saved it Barron superbly I must say it looked to me as though he moved before that kick was taken but maybe in the end justice was done because there was Degree of controversy about the decision in the first place as to whether it was an accidental handball or not. Well, now we've had a good look at that artificial surface, and certainly it's an unnatural game by traditional standards. I thought yesterday that few of the players could really cope with the bounce and the pace of the ball, but these are early days in a very bold experiment, and the Crystal Palace manager, Dario Grady, recognises that. But all along, I think he has been slightly wary about it. Uh, asked me what I uh, thought about the Palace the um, experiment here and I said I thought it was a great idea the experiment and um, I was glad it wasn't us but I was quite happy to come and play on it and uh, whatever advantage that may or may not give the opposition in a league basis because I've got 41 other games to catch mm. up but if it was a one-off game I said I wouldn't be happy playing there uh, say in the quarterfinals of the, of the cup when the opposition were used to the pitch and we weren't and that if the rules allowed me to uh, object I would but if they didn't, I'd, I'd play and do the, uh, make the best of it. And do you feel the same way now? May I just press you on that point, having seen your team here today? I mean, if, for example, you get drawn against QPR in the third round of the Cup, what's your, here, what's your attitude going to be now? If, the, uh, if we're drawn here in the third round of the FA Cup and the uh, rules say that we have to play, we'll come here and do the best we can and we'll try to prepare ourselves for a victory. Well, Tony Curry showing that the really skillful players will prosper on that artificial surface. 
and indeed Tony dominated proceedings long enough to bring Rangers the points. And it might have been easier for them if Clive Allen had uh, struck home that second half penalty. I thought that Neil Smiley was a little unlucky. The abnormal bounce on the pitch I think may have caught him out a bit. And I'm just wondering if that was deliberate handball. But certainly justice was done when Paul Barron saved. But did he move before Clive Allen struck the ball? You can see clearly his feet are moving well before the ball was struck. But in its way I think rough justice was done. There was a highly charged atmosphere there yesterday in a stadium that I believe should be the target for so many other clubs to aim for. Superbly modern, capacity of 27,000, but with 19,000 seats. That's perfect for spectators. There was, though, an incident when a spectator ran onto the pitch and appeared to punch the Rangers goalkeeper John Burridge on the back of the neck. We have those pictures, and indeed we looked at them again today, but we thought in the end, why on earth should we glorify somebody who clearly went along to Loftus Road yesterday not to watch the football? So we didn't show them. third game tonight is from the second division Queen's Park Rangers against Newcastle Rangers second in the table Newcastle 12th and of course that's a far cry from the optimism of Newcastle's opening day when Kevin Keegan made his first appearance for them and indeed scored the winner that day against Queen's Park Rangers Bags forward Keegan's for Berardi Keegan again chance here for Keegan he's done it And here's Kevin Keegan today. Indeed, there was some doubt about his fitness until this morning. He received an ankle injury in that cup replay against Brighton on Wednesday. It's still not quite right, but he plays, and it's his first game in London since joining Newcastle. Manager Arthur Cox is able to name an unchanged Newcastle team, like Keegan, 17-year-old Neil MacDonald, also received an ankle injury in that match against Brighton, and he too is fit. Newcastle have now gone five games without a win. Well, Queen's Park Rangers, who've won only one of their last five, now have Peter Hucker back in goal. He missed last week's cup match at West Bromwich Albion with a shoulder ligament trouble. Uh, John Gregory also returns after being out with a groin strain, but Glenn Rhoda is dropped, and Gary Waddock gets his second game following a cartilage operation. by Micklewhite, a good cross under pressure, and Clive Allen couldn't quite get the header that he wanted at the near post. And after a first half where it's fair to say neither side even began to get to grips with this artificial surface, let's hope something's better coming in the second half. Ferrari now finding one all, and so close to scoring a surprise opening goal for Newcastle, whose attacks in the first half were few and far between. Good work by Verardi, lifted it through for Waddle, hit it first time, but a fraction wide of the far post. Nickel White now, not a very good clearance by Wharton. Nickel White hoping to go all the way, and in the end, it was young Neil McDonald, the 17-year-old, who stuck to his job so well and just held off Gary Nickel White. But at the expense of a corner for Rangers. So Flanagan again left footed with the corner, deep towards Fennec. That might go anywhere. Well, it's gone in. There was a ricochet, and they've gone to applaud Gregory. And Rangers, in curious circumstances, have gone into the lead. Corner came in, Gregory with the chance. And the clearance came back off the number 11 with great nonchalance, accepts that it's his goal. Again, Berry is forward. Or rather, Hazel is forward. 
cleared quite comfortably at the near post by Anderson. Michael White, good save. Well, Michael White caught that well. He's had a good game and carded well. So it's as good as a corner for Rangers, which Flanagan will take. A lot of movement in that Newcastle penalty area by the Rangers players. And uh, Clive Allen on the turn, but a yard or so wide. A deeper corner. Clark stretching and didn't get to it. Gregory once again is in there. Allen on the turn, but just wide. Gary Warwick with it. Neil. Cross in by the young fullback. Here he goes. Well met by Clive Allen. And off the top of the crossbar. John Anderson, a long ball forward. Ten minutes remaining. And now Clive. Gregory has already scored one. one as he goes around the Newcastle defence, cuts inside, right foot, past car, back of the net, 2-0. Five this season so far, before today, and now he takes his total to seven. And his influence throughout the midfield has been of the highest order, John Gregory, this afternoon. <laughs> Free kick quickly taken. It's with Mickle White. That's a good cross as well. And a good save. Again, Clive Allen can't believe it. He hasn't scored for a few games now, six. He's hit the crossbar with a header. He saw that one just pushed away by Kevin Carr. And Flanagan. Yes, he hasn't had the best of luck. Oh, hard push to keep that one out. Flanagan again, deep cross, and the header going wide all the time by Fennick. And a goal kick. So defeat for Newcastle, and Kevin Keegan unhappy with that artificial surface. Uh, it's an old chestnut, but a new slant to it in the News of the World tomorrow. He says, I forecast that if they go up, Rangers that is, first division clubs will protest. I also think that these protests will eventually force Rangers to revert to natural grass. Well, Rangers are second, now four points behind Wolves after Wolves finish 2-2 two -two at Blackburn, then Fulham, uh, Sheffield Wednesday come next, then Leicester and Shrewsbury.